So this week I wanted to do something a little bit different. Um, as you can see, I'm just in real time showing you what it is that I'm doing, which is starting to stretch a canvas over a board. And by doing something different, what I mean is I want to talk this week just basically through the process that I'm doing. I was watching a few different videos of um, other artists on the YouTube platform kind of doing what they're doing. Um, yeah. I kind of approach vlog making in a way that's quite fast paced and uh, I don't know populist or whatever you want to say but I thought you can't just stick to a certain style you've got to play around and kind of experiment with different things so I thought I'd just try that this week so anyway as you can see in the shot I'm stretching the the canvas over the board the idea here is to yeah make the canvas taut and then after it's taut over the board um, you can uh, paint it in a primer and then and then start working on it. And that's exactly what's going on this week. I'm working on this new series of ochre paintings that I started um, last week and the week before. I started in the sense that I made the paint from scratch. And if you wanna see that, you can obviously go back to last week's video. Also, if you're curious how to actually make a proper stretcher and a canvas from scratch, there'll be a link in the description below of the video um, where I actually make that. This isn't a traditional canvas that I'm doing now in, in, in the ordinary sense. It's, um, you know, whereby you use a stretcher and actually stretch the canvas over this hollow frame. And with that, you end up having a certain flexibility with the canvas, which this won't have. Sometimes I do like to work on a board, uh, which provides this solid surface to really paint from. And it has uh, its advantages as well. So yeah, I'm just stapling up the surface now and basically folding the corners into yeah, the proper the proper way that you fold corners when you're making canvases. It's a little bit tricky and fiddly, but um, again, if you're really wondering about how to do this, it's all in the, the other video that I mentioned earlier. So yeah, you just put a bunch of staples in each corner and do this nice kind of origami-esque fold. And once that's done, um, the piece is stretched and really ready to go. I've just got the last two corners to do, which I think I'll skip over now, and we'll jump into what it is that I'm doing for the rest of the video. Okay, that's the canvas stretch on this uh, wooden board that I'm gonna work on. Usually I make it on a stretcher, um, but that actually gives like a flexibility to the canvas, and sometimes I like to work on a solid surface. I found this board in the back when I was doing the cleanup, and I thought, why not? I made this piece a few years ago which uh, yeah was quite popular so I thought I'd um, use the same sort of shape again. I'm quite excited to start it but first I just need to prime it with the glue. I've done that like a million times on the channel now so if you're not familiar with what I'm doing uh, I'll put a link in the description below. Check it out, it's how to make a canvas from scratch and uh, the rabbit skin gluing, the traditional method for priming your canvas is also uh, documented in that video. Okay I've just primed it now, it's ready to go. Well it's meant to dry but I just had a kind of uh, urge or inspiration or whatever you want to call it and a lot of the work that I do here with abstraction is experimentation and learning through experimentation and the ochre that I've been working with is um, yeah changing color drastically from its raw kind of form to uh, when it's when it's mixed with the oil it's getting a lot darker and I just thought while it's while the surface is wet now because this is very chalky just to go back a little bit um, when you draw on with it it's a bit like charcoal and it will fall off over time unless you varnish it which I obviously will do anyway but what I'm getting at is while this is wet I'm going to start actually working in with a piece of ochre just to see and start putting initial marks down and then as the glue dries and I put on that second layer of glue um, those ochre marks will be embedded in the uh, in the priming layer so there We'll jump to tomorrow where I'll be starting the painting, I think. And again, that's exactly what happened. I started the painting. So we're coming back to where I'm going to talk over what it is that I'm doing. And I've initially laid down some marks using ochre into that wet rabbit skin glue. And after that, I start depicting it in um, charcoal. This charcoal is then, these primordial charcoal shapes even, are then built up further using the paint that I've procured and made. And um, yeah, this surface building is really uh, what this is about, building up that initial first layer. Okay, I'm just, I'm just gonna stop it there. Um, this is really quite interesting actually and exciting. I'm quite enjoying it, but it really is a very, very different way of painting than I'm used to. Stylistically, it's gonna be similar, obviously. Uh, I mean, I am painting it and, and it's an abstract work uh, from me. 
but what this is is a huge limitation it's a limitation in palette it's a limitation in um in material and um, and I, I didn't really talk about that the other day but i went to buy some cameras the other day and uh yeah it was mega expensive and i was just there like oh let's see what's in the studio and i basically dug up like loads of of scraps so i've got all of these i must have like 15 20 different you know sizes shapes of of canvas all ranging between i don't know about 80 centimeters by 80 centimeters to two meters by a meter so with my limited palette i then decided that sometimes through limitation the best work can actually produce and can be produced sorry and i always like to quote Pascal. he's just you know one of my all-time favorites really and i went to an exhibition of his recently and i just saw this this work being produced in absolute sort of poverty or relative poverty and it just goes to show that you know you don't need the highest quality this or that or the, the the best of this or or sometimes even the choice when when your options are limited i think it might actually cause you to to have a creative leap that would not that would not otherwise be possible and so i'm sort of trying to artificially create that now through my cheapskatiness or whatever you want to call it but it it, it um instigated that idea for me that made me think oh maybe it's quite a quite a good thing to limit my palette and limit my uh, size and shape for this um work so that's a little bit where where i'm coming from so you can understand the philosophy behind this unit of work that i'm that i'm now going to be working on for the next couple of months yeah the more i look at this the more i think this is i'm i'm i'm, I'm striking upon something here so again, you know, this is just the base layers. The white will come through from the canvas, or not necessarily the white, but the lighter tones. And then it'll be highlighted later on, hopefully through what I manage to, um, well, create through the ochre that I have procured. Uh, there is one possible setback that might happen. Because it forms in, in I think, sediment in layers, the, when I start grinding it up, there might be like a big streak of red through the middle, which will then obviously taint the white and make it very very well off white uh, and if that's the case I'll just I'll just have to work with what I've got so I think tomorrow or the day after I'm going to need to find that out otherwise I'll make this far too dark and won't actually be able to lighten it with the highlight if that's the case then I'll have to kind of retroactively work work back to front and and, and remember that I need to leave these areas of lightness for that uh, you know interest in the eye i really try and make my paintings convey some sort of uh, path the idea is that your eye travels from place to place and i can demonstrate what i mean over here so when you first see this work it kind of is a bit mono uh in the sense that the, the, the whole thing is at once but then the more you start looking you know this area over here certainly pops out to me and then and then over here and then you start looking more and more and you see this very thick texture that's going on. Let's go even further for you. And it's these textures and play with with the material that I'm really interested in. It's a multi-dimension uh there's there's multiple dimensions that I'm that I'm trying to interact with my viewer over, not just a simple image and that's why this wouldn't necessarily work as a print. It's got to be seen in its uh in its kind of uh, crude form I'm just being caught by the painting over there so I'm gonna go and work a bit more on that and uh, I'll check back in with you in a day or two when I've when I've you know made some progress and I'm happy okay so this will be the last kind of section where I'm talking about what it is that I'm doing now that first initial layers down with the charcoal and those uh, first brushes I start really working in and, and depicting certain other areas and building up that surface Normally I like to do layer upon layer upon layer, but there's an immediacy with this paint and again this prime primal quality, um, especially remembering where the paints come from, that I'm trying to capture within this series of work, which is a bit more immediate and um, yeah, only really a first layer. So I hope you've actually enjoyed me doing this slight variation and talking through what it is that I've been up to this week. Let me know in the comments what you think and I shall see you again hopefully next week. Take care then. Bye.